Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren, and in today's video, WoW had released 7.1.5 PTR compilation of all the class changes, so I kind of want to go over everything to keep you guys updated. So if you want to read all these changes, I'll have the link for WoWhead in the description down below. This is literally everything that is rogue related, full shindig. And the reason I'm making this video is so you guys can first of all stay informed into what is going on in World of Warcraft next patch that is coming out, which is happening on the 17th of January after the new year and will come with some buffs and possible nerfs. And mainly because rogues have been in a kind of weird spot in PvP, but this recent 5% agility fix for PvP has been simply amazing. And I think that we wouldn't have gotten fixed if people didn't go out in the community and voice their opinions, hence why I made so many basically complaint based videos. Anyway, I want to go over everything that is happening, so if you guys are unhappy with any of the changes, we can have a discussion in the comments below, and you guys can voice your opinions, whether it be in the forums or in this video, and if you think this is something worth of an issue, I can be your voice to speak out and make a video with all the points detailing everything that could be wrong or not wrong with a buff or a nerf. But anyways, let's get on to it, let me talk a little bit, uh, a little bit about everything. I will discuss all the changes and what they mean for PvE and PvP specifically. First of all, we got a lot of the aura changes. We got an aura for assassination, which is like a 7% buff for a lot of your effects. We have a uh, aura for subtlety, which is now at 12%, I'm pretty sure Blizzard has it, and an outlaw aura. Now, I'm not quite sure what these auras exactly do, but it seems that my outlook is hitting a little bit harder on the PTR. And basically these auras are to adjust all the abilities, kind of like how they do in PvP where they change agility by flat percent, you know, in terms of damage increase instead of tuning specific abilities. So it's in a way Blizzard kind of ties all the abilities together and can change the effectiveness as a general rotation by 7% so you can basically control everything. I'm not sure if this is an easy way for Blizzard to just uh, control a class in terms of just how much raw DPS output it can deal, but I think that is basically the point of it. So we will have to watch out for these aura changes in the future. The fact that they're introducing these auras I don't think makes a much of a difference, but I think the fact that they'll be able to modify these auras in the future is what we should be watching out for. It's kind of weird to see Blizzard clump everything together like this with auras, but maybe that will be for the better in terms of the balance in PvE and PvP. I'm pretty sure this doesn't really affect PvP that much, I'm pretty sure it's more of a PvE rotation damage per second in raid environment type of change, so for the most part most of you shouldn't be too worried about it. The first spec we'll be taking a look at are is assassination spec, I'm gonna go over all the changes from talents to basically how they have it on Wobhead, as well as a bonus for PvP, something you guys are gonna be very excited if you're playing assassination right now, and basically will want to make everybody want to play with you. Anyway, Agonizing Poison can be applied a little bit more effectively since it has a 30% chance to apply instead of 20. This is uh, for PvP in 2s, this might be more of a viable option if you were considering playing with Agonizing Poison and after some of the tweaks with Talents in the next patch, you might consider it. But this is more PvE change where Agonizing Poison can apply much more directly and have a little bit higher chance especially when you're setting up on a boss, because let's say you got all the burst cooldowns ready, but you still uh, are at 4 stack of Agonizing Poison instead of 5. So some of your hits are going to hit into the 4 stack rather than 5, and that means you're losing value and damage. So a nice little change increase for Agonizing Poison. Library Planning saw a nerf, and I feel like this is a directly a PvE nerf, because uh, Library Planning is just way too strong for PvE, but it's an interesting ability for PvP. I think it will still be interesting in terms of 2s and 3s for assassination, so if you are PvP as assass, I wouldn't completely discount it because the damage difference is 3%. Internal Bleeding got a direct buff, especially for PvP, as it deals more damage in terms of attack power, so in PvE you can't really use Internal Bleeding that often unless you're using it on adds, so on a boss pull this won't be as effective. But for PvP centric type of playstyle, Internal Bleeding buff is going to mean more damage for PvP which is probably one of the best changes they could have done because internal bleeding is such an integral part of a kidney rotation for assassination rogues, so being able to deal a little bit more damage with internal bleeding means you'll just simply be able to deal more damage and force more pressure in PvP. So in a way you can think of it as a buff when you do your lineups. Shadow Focus got a side buff, but nobody really ever uses it, so we'll just ignore that one. And Subterfuge got a decent buff for Yugo Road to deal 125% more damage instead of 100, 
So 25% buff to the ability in terms of its damage, more or less, unless I'm doing my math wrong. Anyway, for uh, anybody doing PvP as a subtlety rogue, you definitely will want to see if you can open up with two garotes and two different targets. And in an opener, you'll have some opportunity for spread pressure to be able to put two bleeds into different targets and start putting a little bit more hefty damage onto them from the get go. So it's a very interesting ability in terms of how you use it. Direct buff for PvP. Now I want to talk about a bit of a controversial change Blizzard decided to do. All slows for rogues got nerfed. So for assassination, crippling poison, instead of reducing an enemy's movement speed by 50%, now it's 30% movement speed reduction. What does this mean for PvE? For PvE means that the adds won't be able to uh, be slowed quite as effectively. But in a raid and dungeon environment, there's usually more than one class that can bring in slows. So your slows as assassination rogue basically mean nothing. So I guess they're trying to open up for Assassination Rogue's ability to run Leech and Poison, but nobody really runs Leech and Poison to begin with. So if for PvE, this was a kind of a bad change. For PvP, this is probably one of the most effective changes as it'll make you waddle after your enemies and most enemies will be able to walk away from you as a rogue. That's right, if you're walking at 50% movement speed reduction but enemies are walking at 30% movement speed reduction, that means enemies can literally walk away from rogues. So I don't really know how this is going to impact us all. I know that this isn't really going to impact Assassination Rogue for certain, as Assassination Rogues have the insane mobility that they do currently. So for them, it is not going to be as detrimental. But for Outlaw and Assassination Rogues, this might be something of an interesting change because you're basically going to have to run after everybody left and right. So that might get very, very annoying after a while. So. We'll see how this turns out once the patch is out, but I foresee this change being a pretty bad change for PvP in general. Rupture got a change in itself. What I've been told is the change is you basically deal the same amount of damage for Rupture, but your combo points determine for how long you want the Rapture to last. So for Rupture, for PvP, this is going to be good because you can open up with a cheap shot into Rupture without losing on the Rupture damage. And for PvE, you're going to have a little bit more flexibility in terms of the choice of your talents and for example deeper strategy is probably going to be seen in itself out of the rotation completely so if you've been rolling deeper strategy as assassination rogue for pve or pvp vigor is going to take over so it'll be a little bit easier to manage your energy and rotation and we also got a buff of blind i simply gave blind to assassination rogue so that is an awesome buff for pvp so if you've ever been feeling like oh you don't really feel like a rogue anymore well with this change as a buff of blind you'll be able to feel more like a rogue and you're definitely going to be invited to a lot more arena groups because assassination rogues already brings good sustain and good burst damage it already brings the setup basically what a combat rogue was during Warlords of Jenner, and now with a blind you're able to combine a little bit more CC, let's say when your druid isn't able to clone the target on cooldown, so you won't be able to rotate polymorphs into clones. So cross CC will be a little bit easier for assassination, and it'll be much more of a viable spec of choice. It might be the best spec of choice for 3v3 arenas, but we'll have to see in the future. But this is definitely a buff for assassination rogues indefinite. They also buffed Honor Towns of Flying Dagger and nerfed System Shock by a little bit, but nobody really plays with flying daggers and system shock is there mostly for damage, not the movement speed reduction. So I'm not even going to go on to cover these either. But those are all the changes to assassination rogues in particular. Now I want to talk a little bit about the outlaw rogue and then we'll finish off with subtlety. Outlaw also got a uh, spec aura. It is a 7% effectiveness to a lot of your abilities. So we'll see how that plays out in the future. But I want a BTR and uh, I think I'm dealing slightly more damage by like 7% a little bit more. And uh, it's really difficult to tell though because I guess I should recopy the rogue and get the same gear with all the changes to the artifact weapon to really see a difference. So I might have to give it some more tries. But Cannibal Barrage got a damage buff on its own as well. So 150% of attack power instead of 120. I don't think this is going to be a more viable option for PvP. I think this is more a PvE option for AoE cleaves. Ghost of Strike had a tooltip fix, so it didn't actually get a buff for damage. So if you're reading this on Wowhead, it did not actually get a buff. It is just a tooltip fix. Kiln Spree got a buff, not a tooltip fix. It's actually a little bit more physical damage with main hand and offhand. Might be a somewhat of an option for PvP. But I think this is a strictly PvE option since the lacquerty is so good. But they changed the lacquerty so now it stacks faster. So you can get your 20% haste up much, much faster than usual. So I highly doubt anybody will be playing Killing Spree or Cannibal Barrage in my opinion. 
But we also had a pistol shot change. Pistol shot no longer slows by 50%. Now it is 30%. So Outlaw Rogues are going to be running around all over the place trying to whack everybody with their sabers. So that might get very annoying, but we'll see how it rolls out in the future. I am honestly think if they were to buff cut to the chase, so it worked as, let's say you are slowed as a rogue, but your enemy is not slowed, then it adjusts your speed. So then rogues are basically immune to slows, but can't bear slow anybody. So then it will be a very interesting combination of gameplay. And then basically means rogues cannot be peeled ever because they'll have insane chase capability. But I'm pretty sure that will break the game. Otherwise, back, uh, I'm going to stop getting off the tangent. But uh, pistol shot had a tooltip fix and a slow. The slow is there, but the tooltip fix for damage increase is fake. It's just a tooltip fix. Same thing goes for saber slash, just a tooltip fix. But slice and dice got an interesting buff, which might see itself getting into rotation. Slice and dice have been changed where it deals 100% attack speed and has energy regeneration rate increased by 15%. So it does mean you get a little bit more energy and more auto attacks with slice and dice. I'm not sure if this is going to be a good PVE or PVP change. For PvE, what I've seen so far, it might be good if you're playing a mastery heavy build with Outlaw Rogues, but I'm not really sure if this is going to be seen stuff in rotation, simply because Roll the Bones 2 buffs is still better than a Slice and Dice buff on its own. But it might see itself play in PvP, there's a bit of a controversy on that. Uh, in PvP, if Slice and Dice brings you enough sustain damage to be able to force certain cooldowns out of healers and dps then say slice and this will be a better option but for the most part having massive cooldown reduction and crit buff and an auto attack buff and uh all the other buffs that roll the bones brings actually might be better because the two buff in pvp might still better for more pressure than a slice and dice. I actually would want to see slice and dice be a decent buff for PvP, simply because then out rogues will run with a single buff and they'll be able to force pressure out of healers by having just one dedicated buff. So in the rest of the game you can line up uh you can line up CC and setups on enemies. But rolling with roll the bones isn't really that much of an issue either. I'm kinda used to it at this point, so it's not really that big of a deal. But we'll have to see how the ability turns out, but it is a nice buff, so once the patch comes out, make sure to give Slice and Dice a try, see if you like it for your playstyle. We had Blade Flurry nerf, uh, 5% damage nerf from Blade Flurry, not a lot to be done there. Blunderbuss got a change up, it actually got a massive buff for attack power in order to uh, kind of address the issue that it had with the Legendary. They basically buffed and nerfed and buffed and nerfed the Legendary Green Skin Cuffs, which are the Green Skin Bracers for outlaw rogues and basically made your pistol shot which you would only use when blunderbuss proc from your artifact weapon is up to deal a lot more damage so you would use between the eyes and then your blunderbuss would deal a ton of damage so they buffed and nerfed it but they also buffed blunderbuss in general so it might give some outlaw rogues a different sort of playstyle, and it might be a good change for pve mainly be actually no pvp because we might have a little bit more burst and a little bit more consistency and damage if we were rolling something along the lines of quick draw so I think that'll be a very interesting change since the buff and uh, we'll have to see if it's even run. Now we have subtlety as the very last spec and I think subtlety got the most amount of changes for the patch in terms of straight up buffs. Let's talk about subtlety. First of all, Nightblade got a 12% periodic damage increase buff and it also got an aura buff. So the way aura is done is a uh, value effect is 12%. So 12% buff the periodic damage of Nightblade by 12%. So that's kind of how the auras will work. Not sure we'll see a big transition of that into PvP, but we'll just have to wait and see. On top of that, they didn't post this in the forums, but now Blade got a change in terms of its ability and how it functions. The dot aspect of subtlety is actually a physical debuff. So you cannot remove it unless you pop or bubble or block it off or um is any other kind of abilities to remove physical debuffs but it is a physical debuff that it hits you for magical damage so you cannot cleanse it the slow can be cleansed but the actual damage of nightblade cannot so that's a damage increase for pvp in particular because in pve bosses can't really cleanse certain spells so pvp damage buff indefinitely then we have gloom blade got a buff in terms of shadow damage so it might be seeing itself for a pve change i'm not really sure if it's going to see itself for pvp change i made a video talking about gloom blade in the past and i feel mobility for uh, subtlety rogues in particular is going to be one of the most defining traits in terms of pvp so you will probably go be going with shadow strike spam instead of gloom blade spam because it tags in mobility and so many other buffs in order to make the ability better master shadow saw a little bit nerf uh, instead of giving you 30 energy as soon as you enter stealth or enter activate shadow dance it gives you 25 energy instead not much of a nerf but is a decent change in terms of the ability 
uh you're not really gonna notice it i'm pretty sure this is a pve change more than pvp Master subtlety and don't longer last for six seconds last for five i'm pretty sure it's a pve change as well in order to make other talents like gloom blade more of an option for subtlety rogues like the other specs of rogues they change the slows and nightblade being one of the slows for all three rogue specs nightblade is no longer slow on targets by 50 percent now it slows them by 30 percent so honestly this kind of sucks in my opinion in terms of just how much uh i guess effectiveness it has and um dang but i feel subtlety rogues even though they also got a slow debuff on them they are going to be less affected by this because of the massive mobility that they have been able to teleport all over the place and that's kind of what i meant with gloom blade how i don't think gloom blade will completely replace shadow dance and for pvp in particular uh subtlety rogues will be using shadow dance all the time and shadow strike spam all the time instead of utilizing gloom blade i mean there might be some options and some comps where maybe you run with a healer like a paladin who can give you freedom so you can stay mobile at all times but for the most part i don't think it's going to be that effective uh we also got some changes to the subtlety rogue artifact weapon which are going to be pvp particularly good but also pve good akari soul now after using shadow strike or cheap shot Assault will appear two seconds and then it'll hit your target. And hopefully it'll hit the target that you cheap shot or shadow strike. Instead of like, let's say you, you know, shadow strike an enemy, you turn around on a healer to blind them. And that Akari Soul thinks, oh, that's your target for the time. I know you're blinding the target, but I'll still hit it with Akari Soul and break your blind right then and there. So I'm hoping they kind of fix that issue. I haven't got to try that in the BTR recently. But and making it so Akari Soul hits enemies a lot faster or a lot more more often so the damage doesn't have too much of a delay so you can kind of layer the burst in terms of pvp in particular so subtlety might have a little bit more of a burst increase they definitely will have a burst increase in the opener with gormo's bite as they basically double the damage of gormo's bite in an opener now for pvp it's not as big of a change but for pve it's going to be a little bit of an oomph of damage but for pvp in particular it's going to be very fun because when you open it up with an rmd style of comp with a mage you'll be able to bring a little bit more damage while doing your setup with gormo's bite while going into a full stun lock so you'll be able to bring a little bit more of i guess effectiveness into the game in terms of pvp so that is a nice change shadow nova they made it viable for pve and pvp completely by making it work with shadow strike and cheap shot or shuriken storm while shadow dance is active where you explode dealing damage and this effect may occur a little once every five seconds but every once every five seconds you're able to deal about 150 percent of an attack power in shadow damage after using a shadow strike cheap shot or shuriken storm while shadow dance is active which basically means that in pvp once in a blue moon you'll have random aoe shadow nova damage which apparently does not break cc so if you have somebody blinded or sapped and they get hit with shadow nova it should not i repeat should not break the damage that you are putting out and break break the cc with it with the damage you're putting out but then again, we're talking about a game made by Blizzard, so we never know if there'll be some issues that'll come through, but I'm pretty sure they'll be able to patch it up as this is basically how it's supposed to work. Okay, some of the general changes for rogues in PvP and PvE. Critical strike uh, chance effectiveness has been nerfed from 10% to 5%. So your base critical strike that you started out as a rogue is 5% instead of 10 and it's part of Blizzard toning down all of the different stats by making your primary stats more value, your secondary stats less value. So in a sense, all specs of all classes are not supposed to change in terms of damage. You basically are supposed to go into patch 7.1.5, your rotation might feel slow, you might feel like you're not critting as often, you might feel like your haste is just not as effective, you might feel that your versatility no longer is just, I guess versatility didn't really do anything, but your crits, your haste, and your playstyle might feel slower, might feel a little bit more dull, but your damage should basically stay the same. You should be able to deal the same amount of DPS or healing or be able to tank the same amount of damage you normally would, no matter the changes that are coming on 7.1.5. So, if you are feeling like you are nerfed but your damage is still there, it's part of the thing that Blizzard is doing where they're changing the stats of primary and secondary stat issues and uh, all that jazz. And it's something that is going to be happening, but it shouldn't affect your gameplay. They also adjusted the stats for PvP templates in order to, uh, I guess, I correlate to the change. So your playstyle and how you play your spec in PvP should not see any kind of changes. You should, you should be able to play exactly the same way with the same amount of crit, same amount of haste, because they adjusted those stats for the amount of, uh, I guess, haste and crit and everything that you lose. So in a way for PvP, 
everybody is gonna be dealing slightly bit more damage a little bit more healing and i guess be a little bit more tankier because they're still allowing you to keep the same amount of agility and with the rogues getting a bit more of a buff i feel that assassination outlaw and subtlety are all in a way are getting slight very very slight damage buff for pvp but some of you might not even feel it as rogues we also get shroud of concealment this isn't really a buff for pvp this is something fun that you can do with the setup but most rogues that are rolling various comps for arenas already have all the setup they need in terms of stealth and being able to set up on targets so catching a rogue or a stealth isn't always all the detrimental and in most cases rogues do get a setup either way whatever the comp they're rolling with but this is more of a buff for PvE that'll make rogues integral and bring in for Mythic Plus dungeons where you can skip certain ads. So this will be pretty cool for PvE in particular, but we'll see how it turns out in the future. Again, the lacquer I talked about before, it stacks a bit faster, so that has been changed. Cheat Death is now at a 6 minutes cooldown, but should reset once you actually die. So for PvE, if you're doing raid pulls and you're wiping over and over and over, you shouldn't have to deal with a cheat death not being available every time you do a raid pull. But they are making it so that rogues can't completely ignore mechanics of long-term fights. This isn't really a buff for PvE. I mean, this is a nerf for PvE, but I don't think how this is going to change your PvP gameplay really all by much. But rogues are probably going to be uh, rolling listeners either way, as it turns out to be the better option, because cheat death now has a 6 second cold down so then it's like i don't know if i really want to do that anymore uh death row buff got an aoe dps increase so your aoe aspect of death row buff is going to hit a little bit harder uh, so it's more of an option for pve don't think it's a buff for pvp deeper strat has been nerfed by 50 percent instead of increasing your finishers to deal 10 percent increase uh damage now it's going to be five percent increase so a lot of rogues are going to be rotating away from deeper strat into vigor so it'll be more of an option Although for Outlaw in particular, for anybody who's playing Outlaw, I still think for PvP we'll be playing with Deeper Strat, mainly because the damage you run through is increased, and that's kind of where your burst comes from. So a lot of you might want to stick to that, but give it all a try, try it all out, and see for yourselves. There's our Mark for Death, which now uh, they did have a bit of an issue with all the tooltips, but if you have Deeper Strat and Mark for Death, it'll give you 6 comma points. So basically Mark for Death will fill your comma points as it's supposed to, but it does not work with anticipation where it will fill you 10 comma points. So if you're thinking of running cheeky anticipation, I got some bad news for you. Also anticipation, they now you can store a maximum of 10 comma points. It is still useless. It is still crap talent. I don't know why Blizzard still has it. It is actually just a terrible talent, but they still have it. And that's about it. That's literally everything that we have for rogues. And Blizzard didn't really have too much of a blue post except talking about cheat death. So Blizzard didn't really say much about what are some of the changes for rogues. Hopefully, will come out okay. I'm not quite sure about the slow nerf that is going out globally to rogues, but we'll have to see how it works out in the future. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about all the buffs and nerfs in the comments below. And if you want to make a change, go to your local forum post and make a post talking about your concerns. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see all of you in the next one.